Hey guys, it is Theme Thursday, Woodland and Camping, and you're tuning in with Love for Reborns with Baby Nathan and Baby Ethan, and they are in their tent right now, listening to the crickets and babbling amongst themselves, and the boys are both in Let's see, Ethan is in a raccoon sleeper, as you can see the little raccoons on his, like, right up on his chest. And he has his little raccoon stuffed animal, Mr. Bandit. And little Ethan here is also in a sleeper that has a fox on it right here. And he has his fox stuffed animal, Mr. Todd. So, I thought it would be perfect to read a story... And I am going to read Bambi. So, here's Bambi. I thought this would be a perfect time to read it. So, let's begin. Bambi came into the world in the middle of a thicket. One of those little hidden forest glades which seem to be open but are really screened in and, <clears throat> and on all sides. The magpie was the first to discover him. This is quite an occasion, he said. It isn't often that a young prince is born. Congratulations. Bambi's mother looked up. Thank you, she said quietly. Then she nudged her sleeping baby <clears throat> gently with her nose. Wake up, she whispered. Wake up. The fawn lifted his head and looked around. He looked frightened and edged closer to his mother's body. She licked him reassuringly and nudged him again. He pushed up on his thin hind legs, trying to stand. His four legs kept crumpling, but at last they were bore his weight and he stood beside his mother. What are you going to name the young prince? asked the baby rabbit. I'll call him Bambi, the mother answered. Super cute. Bambi, repeated the rabbit. That's a good name. My, <clears throat> my name's Thumper. And he hopped away with his mother and sisters. The little fawn sank down and nestled close to his mother. She licked his spotted red coat softly. The birds and animals slipped away through the forest, leaving the thicket in peace and quiet. The forest was beautiful in the summer. The trees stood still under the blue sky, and out of the earth came troops of flowers unfolding their red, white, and yellow stars. Bambi liked to follow his mother down the forest pass, so narrow that the thick leafy bushes stroked his flanks in a and as he passed. Sometimes a branch tripped him or a brush or a bush tangled about his legs, but always his mother walked easily and surely. There's pages. There were friends all the past, the possums hanging by their long tails from the branches of a tree. <clears throat> said, They said, Hello, Prince Bambi. As Bambi and his mother reached a little clearing in the forest, they met Thumper and his family. Come on, Bambi, said Thumper. Let's play. And Bambi began to run on his stiff, spiny legs. Then he saw a family of birds on a low branch as he stared at them. These are birds, Bambi, Thumper said. Birds, said Bambi, slowly. It was his first word. When he saw a butterfly fluttering across the path, he cried, Bird, 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 bird. No, Bambi, said Thumper, that's not a bird. It's a butterfly. Then Bambi saw a clump of yellow flowers and he bounded toward them. Butterfly, he cried. No, Bambi, said Thumper. That's a flower. Suddenly he drew back. Out from the bed of flowers came a small black head with two gleaming eyes. Flower, he said. <clears throat> That's not a flower. That's a skunk. Flower, said Bambi again. The young prince can call me a flower if he wants to, said the skunk. I don't mind. In fact, I like it. 
Bambi had made another friend. One morning, Bambi and his mother walked down a path where the fawn had never been. A few steps more and they would be in a meadow. Wait here until I call you, she said. The meadow is not always safe. She listened in all directions and called, Come. Bambi bounded out. The meadow, he said, and he leaped into the air three or four or five or five more times. Catch me, his mother cried. As she bounded ahead, Bambi started after, stared, started after her. He felt as if he were flying without any effort. As he stood from beneath, <clears throat> he saw standing a small fawn. Hello, she said, moving near to him. Bambi was shy, of course, but bounded to where he saw his friend, Flower the Skunk, playing. He pretended he did not see the new little fawn. Don't be afraid, Bambi, his mother said. This is little Feline. Her mother is your aunt. Soon Bambi and Feline were racing around the meadow. That's cute. I wasn't showing you guys pictures, sorry. Suddenly there was a sound of hoof beats and figures came bursting out of the woods. They were the stages they were the stags. One of the stags was larger and stronger than all of the others. This was the great prince of the forest, very brave and wise. The great stag uttered a dreadful word, man. Instantly birds and animals rushed toward the woods. As Bambi and his mother disappeared into the trees, they heard behind them on the meadow loud, roaring noises terrifying to Bambi's ears. Later, as Bambi and his mother lay safely in their thicket, his mother explained, Man, Bambi, is what man in the meadows. He brings danger and death to the forest with his long stick that roars and spurts flames. Someday you will understand. One morning, Bambi woke up shivering with cold. His nose told him there was something strange in the world. When he looked out through the thicket, he saw everything covered with white. It's snow, Bambi, his mother said. Go ahead and walk out. Cautiously, Bambi stepped onto the surface of the snow and saw his feet sink down in it. The air was calm and the sun on the white snow sparkled. Bambi was delighted. As he walked Stepping high and carefully, a breeze shifted a branch above him ever so slightly, just enough to tip a heavy load of snow on Bambi's head. He jumped high in the air, startled and frightened, then ran off, licking the snow from his nose. It tasted good, clean and cool. Thumper was playing on the ice-covered pond, and Bambi trotted gingerly down the slope and out onto the smooth ice, too. His front legs shot forward, his rear legs slipped back, and down he crashed. He looked up to see Thumper laughing at him. He finally lunged to his feet and skidded across the ice dizzily, landing headfirst in a snowbank on the shore. As he pulled himself out of the drift, he and Thumper heard a faint sound of snoring. Peering down into a deep burrow, they saw the little skunk lying peacefully asleep on a bed of withered flowers. Wake up, flower, Bambi called. Is it spring yet? Flower asked sleepily. No, winter's just beginning, said Bambi. I'm hibernating, the little skunk smiled. Flowers always sleep in the winter, and he dozed off again. So Bambi learned about winter. It was a difficult time for all the animals in the forest. Food grew, and sometimes Bambi and his mother... Oh, well, look at here, you guys. What do we have here? We have a strange creature. What is this? Hmm, it's a white something. I don't know what that is. Let's see, what is it? Can I touch it? Oh, geez. Hmm, I don't know what that is, you guys. It's a small little white creature. It looks like, uh-oh. Um, can I help you? Um, hello? Well, hi there. Mr. Bobcat? Are you a bobcat? I don't know. Um, can you go away? Go. Go back home. Go on. Go on. Hold on, guys. I am so sorry. We have strange creatures amongst us. 
Hmm, well, this one seems to like it here. So I guess I'll let him stay. Hmm. All right, well, he can stay. I don't remember where I left off, so I'm just going to do this. So Bambi and his mother were nibbling at the grass when they suddenly smelled man. As they lifted their heads, there came a deafening roar like thunder. Quick, Bambi, his mother said. Run for the thicket. Don't stop, no matter what happens. Bambi darted away and heard his mother's footsteps behind him. Then came another roar from man's guns. Bambi dashed among the trees in terrified speed, but when he came at last to the thicket, his mother was not in sight. He sniffed the air for her smell, listened for her hoof beats. There was nothing. <clears throat> wow, these animals around here are creeping me out. Whew. I don't know, man. That one's trying to play with the, the light over there. I don't know what he's doing, but it's kind of cute. So, Bambi raced out into the forest, calling wildly from his mother. Slightly, the old stag appeared beside him. Your mother can't be with you anymore, the stag said. You must learn to walk alone. In silence, Bambi followed the great stag off through the snow-filled forest. Soon it was spring, everything was turning green, and the leaves looked fresh and smiling. Suddenly, Bambi looked up and saw another deer. Hello, Bambi, said the other deer. Don't you remember me? I'm Feline. Bambi stared at her. Feline was now a graceful and beautiful doe. A strange excitement swept over Bambi. When Feline trotted up and licked his face, Bambi started to dash away. But after a few steps, he stopped. Feline dashed into the bushes and Bambi followed. Suddenly, Rano, a buck with big antlers, stood between Bambi and Feline. Stop, he cried. Feline is going with me. Bambi stood still as Rano... <clears throat> nudged Feline down the path. Suddenly, he shot forward, and they charged together with crash. Again and again, they came together, forehead to forehead. Then a prong broke from Rano's antlers, and a ter terrific, and a terrific blow tore open his shoulder, and he fell to the ground, sliding down a rocky embankment. As Rano leaped, leaped off into the forest, Bambi and Feline walked away through the woods. At night, they trotted onto the meadow where they stood in the moonlight listening to the cat east wind and west wind calling to each other. Early one morning in the autumn, Bambi sniffed the scent of man. The great stag came and said, Yes, Bambi, it's man, with tents and campfires. We must go to the hills. Bambi ran back to the thicket for Feline. The sounds of man and the barking of dogs came closer. He lunged at the dogs and called, Run, Feline! The roar of gun crashed almost beside him, but he dashed ahead as a killing pain shot through him. The old stag appeared and said, The forest has caught fire from the man's flames of campfire, from campfires. We must go to the river. They plunged into the raging fire and then fell into cool, rushing water. Panting and breathless, they struggled onto a safe shore, already crowded with other animals. With a cry of joy, Feline came running to him and greatly licked the wound on his shoulder. Together, they stood on the shore and watched the flames destroy their forest home. But soon spring came again, and green leaves and grass and flowers covered the scars left by the fire. Again, news went through the forest. Come, al <clears throat> come along, come to the thicket. At the thicket, the squirrels and rabbits birds, and birds were peering through the undergrowth at Feline and two spotted fawns, and not far away was Bambi, the proud father and the new great prince of the forest. Aw, the end. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that story, and we are going to do one more story for you, and look at our little creature back there. I think he's very interested in that light. Super cute. I think I'm going to keep him, and I think I'm going to call him Cody, because he looks like a bear, a white polar bear, as he's trying to eat my lamp. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Get out of there, you silly boy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Who are you? Do I know you? You are too cute, so I'm going to keep you. All right, guys, so I'm going to read one more story. And I'm going to read Good Night Moon. In the great 
green room, there was a telephone and a red balloon and a picture of... The cow jumping over the moon and three and there were three little bears sitting on chairs. And two little kittens and a pair of mittens and a little toy house and a young mouse. And a comb and a brush and a bowl full of mush and a quiet old lady who was whispering hush. Good night, room. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. Good night, light and the red balloon. Good night, bears. Good night, chairs. Good night, kittens, and good night, mittens. Good night, clocks, and good night, socks. Good night, little house, and good night, mouse. <clears throat> good night, comb, and good night, brush. Good night, nobody. Good night, mush. And good night to the old lady whispering, hush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this theme Thursday video with Ethan and Nathan, but I must go for now. I love you guys, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Love you guys. Thanks for watching Theme Thursday, Camping and Owl. Love you guys. Bye.